again. Welcome to our second episode this week during our Take Me Out to the Ball Game week. Um, we're really enjoying going to make some fun things that you can either buy at the stadiums if you go to a baseball game or we're going to make things that have to do with baseball. My name is Ann Annie. I'm Grandma Jane. In the first episode, if you were tuned in, which we hope you were, we made cob corn, which is Thai cob caramel corn. And right now, Jane put that together with puck corn, and she made a caramel mixture that she put in the oven then in a roasting pan. Yep. And it's about time now. We promised you we'd keep stirring it as every 15 minutes went by. So we'll be stirring it about three times or a couple times before our 45 minutes is up. And uh, we're right on schedule with the good caramel corn. Again, add peanuts of choice if you like, and either pop fresh corn or use popcorn like Jane did if you don't want holes. Okay, now we're going to make macho nachos in honor of Jose Bautista. Excellent ball player, right fielder, and third baseman. Played in many, on many, many teams. We'll talk about that in a little bit here. But in honor of Jose, we're going to make these wonderful nachos. Now, what? These aren't just simple either. These look pretty awesome, Jane. Tell us what you're going to do. Well, I've got some real lean ground beef browning right now, a little ahead of time, and I wanted to show them how to cut an onion right because I learned. <laughs> we talked about that in an earlier episode. If you re if you, uh, you recall, our, our niece Megan or my niece Megan said you guys aren't even cutting those onions right, and mm -hmm. she was probably correct because mm -hmm. I just have been going at it like yep. however gets the job done. So Jane was good enough to research for you. And look up on YouTube on how to do it correctly. So she's gonna she's gonna demonstrate that because there are many 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 things you're gonna need to slice or dice onions for. And this is a stem, and this is the root. And we cut the stem. What's off. the root? The root with the, the root, fuzzy things. Fuzzy thing. Okay. Yep, that'll be down in the ground further. So the stem's considered the non-fuzzy end. Right. Okay. Yep. And we'll cut that stem off. And then we can cut it. and clean off the skin. Clean all the skin off it. And kids, you know when we talk about color and texture, boy, are you gonna get it all in this dish. And we are, we, we, there are four of us just ready to dive into this when Jane is done. <laughs> And then you lay it flat and you start cutting for slicing this way. Because if you cut it this way, uh, onion is not symmetrical. And the flavor will change. It'll be different. It'll be stronger and not as good. And uh, slicing it. So you're slicing it which um, direction then? Well, like it would be the root to the stem. So you're going you're gonna to go ahead and slice yeah. from root to stem mm -hmm. now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and that will make it a sweeter taste than it would the other way. So those are slices, but then I need some diced for in the um, with the meat for the tacos or nachos. So I'm going to um, do parallel from the root slices right down like that, keep, and the root will keep it like held together. And you're just going like approximately like eighth to a sixteenth of an inch yeah, you can parallel rows, yep. okay? Mm -hmm. From now, stem to root. Yeah, they they show to take the knife and go through like that, but I think it's dangerous. So I'm just gonna slice them like this, and then I'll lay it down and dice more. I think it's a safer way. Yeah, the the video actually had them going a couple of times horizontally, not going all the way through to your hand just going across yeah. a couple of times horizontally, and then going back down again to get your diced uh, onions. But Jane's a little concerned if some of you aren't experienced in the kitchen, that you might end up with some cuts or injuries, so. Yeah. Um, I think it's a little, it's not as safe, so I think you can dice it just as well the other way, for now anyway. And they yeah. don't necessarily have to be real small pieces for no, this, correct? Uh -huh. No, yeah. Any size you want. I kind of like, you guys like onions, so I'll put it in like chunks. And then I'll finish browning this up. The meat's pretty much ready already. Just get the onion a little bit cooked up. And this was 93% lean, so it's really no grease. Otherwise, you'd drain it if you had any grease. 
You so, could use sausage, you could use ground chicken, ground turkey. So a higher fat content ground beef, you, you probably are going to want to drain it. Yeah. Put it into a colander and get that grease out of there. Mm -hmm. I'll just let those onions cook up just a minute and I was going to tell you that I've chopped up some um, avocado. How do you do that? Well, you clean the avocado and I will show you that sometime when I make guacamole dip. But I thought I'd get that done ahead. And uh, I have diced up tomato. I have sliced up black olive. I have black beans that I just drained from the can and put in a container. Um, there also will be some refried beans added to the meat and onion mixture. And I guess what I could do right now, I think I have some chips right here. Always go to the Mexican place and get chips all good. I can start lining those up a little bit. And what, you know, have you ever reached into a pile of nachos and come out with a chip, a naked chip? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, this, I'm going to show you a technique that hopefully you can avoid that. Because that's a bummer. <laughs> and all I have to do is lay them flat, and that's why I have a cookie sheet with a foil lined. And that way you're not scraping like baked on cheese off or anything. It just makes cleanup easier. And you don't have to use this large, it just depends on how many you want to make. And I layer them, so, and I know there's some people here that might like these, so I'm going to make a few extra. And then, we have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> make as and much as you want. <laughs> What's that? Make as much as you want. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that's the fun thing about this cooking day. We have a lot of good food around. It's the highlight of my week. Yeah. <laughs> It is to me too. I told my mom, I said, if I could just do this cooking show the rest of my life, I'd be happy. <laughs> we have a lot of fun. And we learn things and discover stuff. And real quickly, I do want to, Ann and I are conscientious people. If we tell something wrong, we try to always correct it, don't we? So real quick, I want to tell you, the cookie sheet dimensions are 18 by 26, and a jelly roll pan is 15 and a half by 10 and a half. And I think I said wrong dimensions the other day. Remember when I swiggled the uh, ketchup onto the baked beans? A swiggle is a wiggle. And a squiggle is a line back and forth. So it should have been squiggle. <laughs> and then the other thing on the brats, I wanted to be sure you, uh, you can also cook them in a skillet. And uh, they should be cooked at a medium low heat of 300 degrees for 20 minutes. It didn't really say what they should look like, but they said you should turn them back and forth so they're caramelized. Now, did you tell me too, you looked up that it was farther back than 1800s? Yes, for the brats, they go back to like 1313. That's a long time ago. But not the hot dogs. Franks no. go back to 1800s, 1800. but brats go back another 500 Thank years you. or so. Yeah, much. From that, yeah. yeah. So, But okay. still the two two places that are fighting over them. Yeah. The Thuringen or whatever, and whatever yeah. the other place was. I'm gonna put some taco seasoning in here. Now, you can make your own too, and there's some recipes online if you ever want to try that. And I'm going to try it sometime because I bet it's healthier for you to make your Probably. own. Probably. Yeah. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to add some refried beans right to the pan here. And I heard Josh got Megan to like them. So Jane, if there's any of these ingredients that somebody doesn't want. It's not going to ruin the recipe. Correct? No, uh -uh. you can kids. You can leave off any of these ingredients you desire. We are making these to help. We want them made. Yep. So or if you add don't want more, or add more or less. Yeah, um, but if you don't want any of these the olives or the beans or the tomatoes or the the avocado or the refried beans or black beans, whatever, you don't have to put them in. Or different cheeses. Or yep. I just added a little water because I added that taco seasoning. And um, it's getting a little dry, so you want to keep it. Oh, those onions must be strong. My eyes are burning over here. Really? Yeah, I I've can't got, believe mine are. I've got a little. Ooh. And here, here uh, you're not, they're not supposed to be as bad that way. Yeah. <laughs> must be a strong one. Okay, I'm going to mix this up just a second, and then we can put it onto the chips. There's a little process to this, but it's not bad. And then uh, they can go right in the oven. I think they're supposed to go in the oven for 15 minutes at 400. But we can either, you know. It's okay. We'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Virtually, you just got to melt the cheese. So. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't take too long. 
So then you just apply um, a little bit of the meat mixture to each chip. Well, I'm gonna use a different spoon, I think. You got a different spoon in there you can have? Just uh, a lower one, like a, a tablespoon. Yeah, yeah just be careful awesome. to cut one. Yeah. This is where you just coat each one with a little bit of the mixture so you don't have that naked chip. Smells good. Just a little bit of an assembly, but not bad. Annie, do you want to follow me with some black beans just to put on each one? Sure. And then after that, we can just uh, put our cheeses on. We'll leave those for the toppings. I have some mild cheddar here. Just sprinkle that on. And then Monterey Jack, we'll just sprinkle a layer of that on. And then we do another layer of the chips. A little time consuming, but once that's done, that's it. You just warm them up and eat them. So I usually put some tomato, avocado, and black olive on top, and a little bit of sour cream if you want. And uh, you can use salsa, whatever, however you like your nachos. I like nachos when they're good ones, you know. I don't like it when they have like a che cheese spread on there. And I love the cheese spread. Like nacho cheese? Yeah, good I stuff, but yeah, I don't like good. like a cheese whiz or something, you know. <laughs> okay, and you can put the beans on for me again if you want. I Let's sure see will. how much, many layers we can get here. I know some people are having um, Christmas in July. They all live a ways from here and they come here in the summer to do it because winters are so bad, you know. Mm -hmm. I order Christmas all the Dawson's July. clothes from online, most of them, uh -huh. from boutiques online. And oh, yeah. all of them right now are doing their Christmas in July sales. So I'm great. getting like all this Christmas clothes right now. Nice. <laughs> Gosh, that's great. Okay, I think probably about one more layer. It's starting to build up here. I wish the holidays were when the weather was better. So if you guys all live around here, you're lucky for that. tacos one night then with like leftover meat sometimes we'll make nachos mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty good. Megan, would you do me a favor and, and cut the tape for a second Thank you. okay we're back on the air now um i had to uh go take care of something for a client so mm -hmm. go ahead jane what are we going to do now we're going to put the nachos into the oven for 15 minutes at like 400 Okay, and tell me, Jane, was that then three layers of the chips with the meat mixture that had the refried beans and onion and taco mix in? Right. And black beans. Yes. Spooned over. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. The rest yep. of this stuff we're going to get to later, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. When we get it, pull it out, and then we'll just decorate the top with So that. put that in at 400 for about 15 minutes, and uh, how is our caramel corn Well, coming? I really should pull it out and stir it, I think. 
because it's hard to stir it when it's in there. We're going to put the nachos in uh, now at the 250 just till we can get it turned up to 400 here since our caramel corn is still going. Look at the color. We only have one, uh, get one oven or we could have two going at once. Perhaps if we get more popular, we shall purchase another oven. <laughs> I can see where people with big families and a lot of cooking, that really come in handy. Absolutely. Well, don't they make like those ones that are like double stack too with no uh, uh, stove? I think yeah. some big double stack ones. Yeah, okay, and now I think this caramel is getting through around a little better in there. Very good. And we'll stir it again before we pull out. Okay. And again, three o'clock is kind of our goal on that one. And then when it gets to be three o'clock, we'll turn it up to, to 400. But I think, Jane, it's time for our seventh inning stretch. Okay. All right. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. I don't care if I never get back. It's root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out in the old ball game. Play it! Okay, so now we've got caramel corn that'll be coming out at the beginning of next episode. We've got nachos we're going to trim up and end up getting out at the next episode. But next episode will be yet another fun little play on baseball terms, and these are going to be delicious too. So what would you say in signing off, Jane? I was thinking about that today, and I think that, uh, everybody should think about their neighbor or who, somebody that's kind of maybe disabled or older and Go see if they can use a little company or help with something around the house. Well, I was going to use the terms at baseball, baseball this week to always stay well grounded and to always have a nice, healthy base of support system that can always keep track of you. And uh, don't be afraid to slide into some good opportunities Very when good. they present themselves. Even if they don't turn out at the end, give it a shot. All you can do is try, right? That's the important mm -hmm. thing. Okay, so until then, until next time, we hope to see you on Now We're Cooking!